Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. Medora's uh, sculptures and installations created both indoors and out take the form of studio works, earth art, and bonitas. Some are, uh, some are permanent while others last only for a day or until the rain washes them away. Uh, the work describes an internal geography influenced by the rural rugged terrain of where she grew up in Conyers, Georgia and the cities she has lived in. Frey is a cross-disciplinary artist originally from Georgia and is currently serving a residency here with us at Atlanta Contemporary. She has exhibited domestically with solo shows in Seattle, Washington, New York City, and Atlanta, Georgia, with international exhibitions in Austria and Spain. She was recently commissioned by the Katana Museum of Art to create a large-scale outdoor public work on the museum campus and just completed a new public art project in Atlanta. This winter, you will be able to see a new commission she is creating for a dashboard in their Downtown Winter Lights series. That's just a little bit of her background and uh, what she is currently working on. Um, most of the work that I'm gonna show you today was created during the pandemic and um, began in March, I guess. Um, at the beginning of all of this, um, we lost use of our studios and um, I essentially took the opportunity to start working outdoors again. I had done that before, but um, like everybody else, I just had nothing better to do except to walk around and make art. Um, so I'm going to show you actually a show that I created at Georgia State University that just came down yesterday. I have a little uh, video walkthrough of that as well as some images that were playing on a monitor that was there um, of some land um, and earthworks that I created and temporary installations that I photographed. So uh, this image was created at Arabia Mountain, which all of these works I'm going to show you are really about the place that I grew up, which is actually 10 minutes from uh, where these photographs were created at Arabia Mountain. I grew up on a rock quarry in Conyers and the entire show Stargaze is based on that and actually an extension of the moment in this photograph that you see on the screen. Um, and for the exhibition, I also um, used uh, video and sound recordings that were created at my parents' property. Some of them were drawings that I created using materials on site and I think this one was washed away the last time that I went <laughs> hiking there, which is all fine. Um, creating vignettes and photographing them, taking some materials out onto the site with me in a backpack and setting it up. And that actually took a really long time. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't look like um, these would be labor intensive, but that actually took me probably three days just to create that bit that you can see. and. The larger piece at the beginning was about a five day project. Um, and then this is a walkthrough of the other elements in the show, Stargaze, which the show was actually supposed to be, <laughs> was supposed to happen about two or three years ago. And um, about a month before the first time that I was supposed to show work, uh, they called and said that they were tearing down the building that was connected to the gallery. So we decided to postpone it to the fall. And then in the fall, they actually did tear the building down. So then it was moved again to this fall. And then there was a pandemic. And I just thought, okay, this has to happen now. And, <laughs> and also the work that I was making was, I felt like very in step with what other people were doing, which is focusing on what was in their immediate surroundings. You know, we can't really move around a lot. I spent a lot of time um, hiking and exploring where I come from, um, which my previous work had been about also exploring places that I had lived and combining imagery from the place I grew up and the places that I've lived like big cities, so.
So the last section or the, the last half of the video is an installation that was based on that first image that I showed you um, with those mirrored cubes set on a hillside at Arabia Mountain. And this piece with these rocks um, really was an extension of that moment. And as I mentioned, the video that's being projected in the background is um, video of uh, my parents' property time-lapse and then also projected onto the cubes are various um, different perspectives. Like the cube on the left tended to feature um, maybe the perspective of what smaller life experience like insects and small animals while the cube on the right had more details of the sky and the trees and that kind of thing. Um, and I saw those two cubes as a point of saturation for the exhibition um, where it just, it was all absorbed into those two forms. Um, in the beginning of the video, those pieces are works that I create in the studio that are ruminations on the times that I have spent outdoors um, and, and just basically going back to the studio, thinking through that time, those moments, um, figuring out which materials appealed to me and why. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of industrial materials combined with kind of organic forms or shapes in my work. And I believe that that probably comes from growing up in a space that's natural, but it's been, it's been taken apart and used by men and machines. Um, some, I mean, something that's funny is that I always thought of it as nature because it was so rich with, you know, flora. But um, it took me some time to realize that men had created this place and it was actually kind of a beautiful combination of that interaction. Well, this is called Venus's Looking Glass. And this piece uh, is in the show She Is Here. Uh, which is at the Atlanta Contemporary right now, curated by Kristen Cahill and Dorizia DeMar. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's featuring a al female alumni from the Atlanta Contemporary Studio Artist Program. Uh, this piece, the idea behind this was, um, they actually were looking at another sculpture in my studio. And when we came down into the space, I think that they were concerned there were too many hanging elements in the show. And so they asked me if I'd like to do something else. And I remembered this window had been up one, one evening that I was here. And I thought that that little bit of earth was so fascinating that was revealed in the corner. And how wonderful it would be to create a piece that celebrated that and also created essentially a painting looking out onto this courtyard, which is it's a little forgotten, <laughs> I think, because the shade is always down. Um, so, and then bringing in the rocks, I think, just underscores this idea of, like, the Earth's crust. And the whole idea for me is that we forget about what's below us, which is a tremendous amount. <laughs> and we get caught up on the surface, the chaos of, you know, our daily lives, everything that's happening in the news, and to remember that, you know, and also with my show Stargaze, to remember those things that are greater than us is comforting to me. Um, so I don't know if you want to walk around. Well, and we also have that time lapse. Oh, yeah, we have the yeah. time lapse, too. So this piece changes throughout the day. Um, so you really are made aware of the sun, the movement of the sun. And again, something that's greater than us that we might forget about. Um, so what's really cool about this piece is throughout the day, it always looks different. Right. Yes. It's almost like a sundial. And it looks <laughs> different from day to day even. Um, yes, it's very much like a sundial. And um, actually, it's unfortunate that, you know, people don't get to see the morning light. And I actually did not see the morning light 
until we came in to film this. And even different, like the different weather that happens and everything, it, it always looks different, which is really interesting. It does. It creates kind of a different painting in that window. And the rocks are, for me, an autobiographical material because I grew up on a rock quarry surrounded by these odd piles of gravel. After the, after the quarry was closed, my father purchased the property in the late 60s. But there were remnants of that um, just hanging around. You know, I have a lot of memories of climbing on top of uh, big piles of gravel as a kid. Let's go check out the other piece that you have. Okay, up. sure. Everyone can join us on our, our walk to the yeah. other piece of art. <laughs> so at the same time as creating this installation for She Is Here, it turned out that it was time for me to put a piece on the um, studio artist program wall at the same time, which is a little chaotic. But <laughs> <laughs> um, they were actually considering this piece for the show to begin with. Um, and this is, to me, a very feminine He's still has some rock connecting it to the outdoors, the nature. Let's see if I can put um, This is holding a dipro. It's actually plexiglass now. It, there is a piece of glass that didn't make it. <laughs> Got knocked out of here. But the idea behind this piece is that it's just like very sensual, like feminine form. And um, it's very light, but it's being held up by this very heavy piece of equipment, which is a tow truck winch. Um, <laughs> heavy and light at the same time. Um, I know that you've discussed this in the past, but uh, for those that may not have heard it before, can you talk a little bit about the materials that you use and how you like to reinterpret them? Yes. Um, well, probably the most dominant material I'm using right now is rock. Um, and again, it's something that um, I feel like I imprinted upon as a kid um, and that resonates with me. I love the contrast of something that's 50 million years old combined with this fabric that I bought on the internet that you see disco dresses made out of. <laughs> I like that contradiction. Um, what else? Uh, glass, dichroic glass, any kind of light is appealing to me. Sometimes it's a stand in for sky when I'm making something that is a reflection of an experience outside. Um, other times I use grow lights as a symbol for um, fertility and like the ability to generate um, new life. I'm trying to think of what else I might use. <laughs> Medora, I'll ask a question. I, you know, I, it's Veronica. Um, it was nice that I got to see the installation at Georgia State. And of course, we're privileged to have your pieces on view. But you're, you are a woman artist working in, in this kind of earth art uh, for, forum, I suspect. And, you know, that's a pretty interesting stance for for you to take and so you know is that in doing that work and being present you know out in nature and and kind of you know as we were talking when I was at GSU about you know leaving no trace and yet you're leaving a trace like how do you how do you feel about the fact that you are a woman kind of pioneering you're not the only one of course but in this tradition that has been um generally male dominated. Right. I think actually there were several women artists in the seventies that were doing things. And then Agnes Dennis, she just had her retrospective at the shed in New York city, which I happened upon and it completely resonated with me. Um, she had a piece, it was a field of wheat that she planted in lower Manhattan I think perhaps they just were not talked about as much as the male artist. Um, Anna Mendieta was making um, earthworks. They were smaller and more intimate and, and connected to the body in my opinion, whereas maybe some of the male artists were working on a greater scale. 
Um, well, you can't get greater than like a wheat field, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that maybe they just weren't recognized because they were women. Um, I guess maybe what's different for me is a lot of artists like Robert Long, male artists, they are going outside by themselves. And I don't really get to do that because it's not really safe. So I am always with a companion and I try to take someone who doesn't expect to socialize too much when I'm out there. Um, if you like to watercolor, <laughs> if you like, <laughs> you can come along. <laughs> if you want to hang out and chit chat next to me, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, and I think, I think it's also interesting that you think of land and earth, like it's typically considered a feminine symbol, but we forget about that. Um, and then also my work is based, um, comes out of landscape painting uh, and a lot of landscape painting was occupied by female figures that were very passive characters and, I realized recently that I've, you know, I've created this role for myself where I'm actually outside and doing something in the landscape as opposed, as opposed to just sitting in a, in a landscape. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.